Welcome back. And uh, in this video, we're going to be learning how to rationalize the denominator. Now, this is perhaps the most important concept when uh, we're dealing with thirds. And let's get straight into it. So basically, when we say rationalizing, we are just talking about the denominator because that is what we're going to rationalize. Okay, we cannot always be able to rationalize a number that is in fraction and has a third in it. Okay. So the question is, how do we do that? And we're gonna understand what, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first enter these values in our calculator one by one. And I want you guys to do that with me. So if you don't have a calculator with you right now, quickly pause the video and grab it. And uh, let's uh, do this drill with me. So I want you to enter one upon under root two in your calculator and see what does it give it back to you as. So one upon under root two, if you enter in your calculator, it gives it back to you as root two upon two. Okay, and I want you to focus on the denominator. And then if you enter two upon under root three in your calculator, you'll notice that it gives it back to you as two under root three upon three. And then finally, if you enter three upon four under root two in your calculator, you will notice that it gives it back to you as three under root two over eight. Now, the question is that what exactly is going on over here? Well, your calculator has a certain preference and the, its preference is that it doesn't like the denominator when it's irrational. So what it does is it rationalizes it for you. Okay, and that's how it gives it back to you. So the question is, how does it do that? And how do we, we learn to do that? So it's very simple. And here's how this works. So let's say you have one upon under root two, okay? And a question like this will ask you to rationalize, okay? Or it's gonna ask you to write your answer a certain way in which you'll notice that the square root is not in the denominator. So in order to rationalize this, we look at the irrational element of this fraction, okay? So the irrational element is in the denominator and that's under root two, by the way. Rational numbers are numbers that can be expressed as a fraction of two integers. Irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be expressed as a fraction of two integers. So for example, under root two is irrational, under root three is irrational. Under root four is rational because under root four becomes two and two is an integer. Three upon four, four upon five, all your fraction of integers are rational, all your terminating decimals are rational and uh, all your recurring decimals are rational. So irrational numbers are basically, you could say all thirds or all square roots of non-perfect squares are irrational. Pi also, by the way, is an irrational number and no pi is, if you're thinking that pi isn't pi equal to 22 upon seven, it's not, it's approximately equal to 22 upon seven, okay? So yeah, so we've identified the irrational element and the irrational element is under root two. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply the denominator by itself. And I can't just leave it there because if I've multiplied the denominator by a certain value, I gotta make sure that I multiply the numerator also by a certain, by that very value. Reason being so that the overall value remains the same, okay? So what does this become? The numerator becomes under root two, and as far as the denominator goes, root two into root two becomes what? It becomes two, and there you go. That's how this works. Now, if you've understood this, that's great. If you haven't, nothing to worry about. We've got plenty of examples lined up. So next is you have two upon under root three. How do we rationalize the denominator here? Well, we identify the irrational element, which is under root three, and we multiply the denominator by under root three, and we also multiply the numerator by under root three. What happens then is that the numerator becomes two under root three, and the denominator becomes three, and the denominator is clearly a rational number. Okay, now, for part C, let me just write down the question first, which is three over four under root two. Now, you have two options here. If you want, you could multiply it by the entire denominator, which is four under root two. I mean, you could multiply the numerator and the denominator by four under root two, or you could just multiply it by the irrational element, okay? So I'll, I'll do it both ways, just for this particular question, and then you guys can just stick to whatever method you want. So you could just, you could multiply the numerator and the denominator by four under root two. In that case, here's what happens. Three into four is 12, 12 under root two. Okay, four into four is 16, and um, root two into root two is two. Okay, now we can simplify this using perhaps the table of four. So four threes are and four fours are. Now let's expand, and now you have three under root two over eight. Another thing which you could have done is the following. You have three over four under root two, right? Now, instead of multiplying the entire denominator, you could have just multiplied it with the irrational element, which is under root two. In that case, your numerator would have been three under root two straight away, and the denominator would have been four times two, which is equal to eight. So it doesn't matter how you do it, you get the right answer. So there's no point in debating which one's right. Uh, actually, there's no point in debating which one's right and which one's wrong at all. But there's also no point in debating which one is better. Okay, both of them work equally well. So I've left a couple of questions here. I'm gonna leave a couple of questions here unsolved. I'm not gonna solve them for you, Tika. 
And what I want you guys to do is I want you to try them yourself and use a calculator. Just enter the value as it is, press the equals to sign, and your calculator will give you the final answer, okay? Now, what I would like to do are basically questions like these, okay, where you have a plus or minus, okay? Because these questions are a bit more uh, challenging at first compared to the others. Okay, now, here we have three over two minus under root three. Now, if you remember, in the last video, I told you guys to get used to this identity, which is a plus b, a minus b. Whenever you have something that looks like a plus b into a minus b, it's a good idea to use a square minus b square, okay? Why did I do that? You'll probably understand that in this particular question. So there's no point in multiplying the denominator by itself, which is two minus under root three, because in that case, what our objective is, which is basically getting rid of the square root element or the irrational element will not be fulfilled. Why? Because if you do two minus under root three, the whole thing square, you will have root three. You can expand this, check it out. You will have the square root element intact, okay? However, if you do two minus under root three into two plus under root three, in that case, since this becomes a minus b into a plus b, which is a square minus b square, since both the terms get squared, that means even if you have a square root, it's just gonna cancel out, okay? So let me show you. So since this is a plus b, a minus b, this can be written as two squared minus under root three squared. And notice what happens. You get four minus three, which is basically equal to what? Which is basically equal to one. Okay, so I can multiply the numerator by two plus under root three. And if I multiply the numerator by two plus under root three, that means I also need to multiply the denominator by two under root three and vice versa. So as far as the denominator goes, our objective is fulfilled, okay? It's rational, it's not always going to be one as we're gonna see later on, but it's rational, that's what we're concerned with. Three into two is six plus three under root three. And there's no need to write the upon one part, so you could just write six plus three under root three, and that's it. That's just as good as your final answer. Now, let's talk about this. So in this, you're gonna multiply the numerator and denominator. Okay, you know what? Since I've already done an example of minus, I'm gonna turn this plus, okay? So in this, I'm gonna multiply the numerator and the denominator by, and by the way, it's not like a choice that, oh, let's multiply it by this. We have to do this, okay? So in this, the denominator should be multiplied by two under root five minus four, so that when we do a square minus b square, the square root part just, I mean, just gets, we just get rid of the square root part. And as always, if you're multiplying the denominator by two under root five minus four, that means you also gotta multiply the numerator by the same value. So if I multiply four under root two by two under root five, we get eight under root 10. Remember, apples with apples and oranges with oranges. And this gets multiplied, four under root two gets multiplied by four, so that's minus 16 under root two. Now the numerator clearly cannot be simplified any further because you have square root 10 and square root two. Let's look at the denominator now. So in the denominator, we'll do a squared, which means two under root five whole squared minus four squared. So two under root five whole squared means Let's do that over here so that we can save some space. Two squared is four, root five squared is five. Four squared is 16, so we have 20 minus 16, which is equal to four. Now, if you leave this over here, chances are you will lose marks. In fact, guaranteed you lose marks because you can further simplify it. Now, how you wanna simplify it, that's up to you. So it's always a good idea to first write them separately, like write the denominator separately since this denominator is shared by both the numbers and then simplify it. So four ones are, four twos are. So now we have two under root 10, four ones are, four fours are, minus four under root two. And here's something I will suggest, is that you always you should always check your answer. So four square root two over two square root five plus four. So we get two under root 10 minus four under root two, and that's it, that's the correct answer. Now this part, I'm gonna leave for you guys, follow the same rules, rationalize, check your answer using calculator, and see whether you've done it correctly or not. Okay, uh, that brings me to the end of this video. And I hope you've understood this concept. And that's it for this video. I hope uh, if there's anything you don't understand, you want me to elaborate on further, do let me know in the comment section. And I'll see you guys in the next video where I will solve some possible paper questions so that you know exactly what type of questions we'll be dealing with. So yeah, see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care, bye-bye.